I've had a number of requests from subscribers asking how they could get this board, the Minim OSD board, working with a regular multi-Wii controller that we've seen in many of my other videos. This is one of my quads that I use extensively for FPV. It's quite a rocket ship, it's very powerful, and it means that I can have lots of fun. But one of the things I've missed about it is that there's no on-screen display like I use on my APM models with the Easy OSD. Uh, Easy OSD has some great features like the downlink functions, ability to save the files locally, play them back on Google Earth, some really cool stuff. And you can see all that detail in my other videos. But I wanted a cheap and cheerful way that I could add that same kind of functionality on a heads-up display to this multi-Wii board without spending another £120 on another Easy OSD. So I've actually figured it out finally and what I wanted to do was in this video was actually document what uh, you need to do to get it working, where you need to go to get the software, how you put it on, how you configure it, how you wire it up and power it and what it looks like when it's working. So let me just whet your appetite. This is a very short video. I actually haven't flown the model with this on because I literally just figured this last bit out this morning. And um, here you can see that the uh, on-screen display is overlaying the camera and it's actually connected to this model that we're looking at here where it's a Cirrus SE 2.5 multi-Wii board uh, with a GPS uh, unit attached and we're connecting the Minim OSD to the UART connection which is also the one that you'd normally connect something like a Bluetooth adapter to as well. So let's go through what we're going to talk about in the next 15-20 minutes. Uh, first of all I can kind of complete this introduction, talk to you about what it is, how it works. Then we'll talk about firmware versions. When you search on the internet there is a load of firmware that's out there. I found minim osd underscore basic, minim osd underscore extra, arducam underscore osd, rush underscore osd dash development developmental, KV versions, all kinds of different stuff. And um, I've tried most of them, and we've got one that works. Hooray! So we'll kind of go through that in a little bit more detail. Um, then we'll actually go through the program um, and show you how to upload the stuff. Um, the four steps, really. First of all, I'd always recommend that you clear the EEPROM, uh, particularly because you tend to get a bit of font corruption if you don't do that and it's already bringing an older version of code or someone else's code how you flash the firmware do the um, font update so it's got the latest version of the fonts on it and then how you configure that and then finally we'll spend a bit of time and we'll talk about the connections to the uh, multi-wii itself specifically talking about how you power the board and also then how you connect it up to the actual multi-wii itself on that uart output and then we'll do a summary at the end. So, bear with me. Well, let's start with the um, intro and we'll kind of set the scene here. So, these boards are available on our friends on eBay for about um, 10, 11 pounds a pop. So, you know, in the, in the US, that's what, 15, 16 dollars. Um, compared with the other OSDs that are around, they're very cheap and cheerful. But the challenge that you have with these is that they are, or can appear, complicated to set up although hopefully I'll show you in the next 15 minutes how easy it actually is once you know where the right software is and what the tricks are. Um, this board is not clever in any way shape or form so if you compare it to something like the Immersion RC Easy OSD that's a standalone system with its own current sensor, its own GPS, its own magnetometer, its own accelerometer. The whole thing is in one unit so you can add it to any machine, uh, whether it's powered by an APM or multi-Wii or even has no flight controller in it at all, you're flying directly using the receiver channels. The Minim OSD that we're looking at here is a really relatively dumb piece of technology. It only has two chips on it. One is the ATmega328, which is the processor that the firmware is going to go on to, and the second one, which is the real heart of the system, is a Max chip which actually does the monochrome overlay of the text. So what the actual uh, Minim OSD is doing is taking the outputs that are spewed out the side of a multi-Wii 
on the FTDI and the UART ports, reading those and then translating those into things that can be put on a screen to show things like heading, number of GPS satellites, distance to home, altitudes, the attitude of the craft, you know, pitch roll and all that kind of great stuff as well. So it has to be connected to something else to work well. You can set this up as an as a standalone using analog ports and you can use you know, resistors and dividers and other bits and bobs to make that work with RSI, RSSI and other bits and bobs. But we're not going to cover that here. What I'm going to show you is how to connect this little board, $15, £10 to a multi-Wii and get a really nice OSD system at the end. Things you'll need to do this, you'll obviously need a PC. Um, you can use a Mac, actually. Um, there is a Mac version of the code. You're going to need an FTDI connector. You'll need the board and obviously a machine that's already built and running using multi-Wii code. You're going to really need a multi-Wii code on the actual craft itself of 2.2 or above. And um, once you've got all that stuff, we're ready to actually start looking at the firmware. Okay, let's talk about the firmware. The one that you need to use to get this little sucker working is this one, it's the Rush-OSD-Development. It's the official team KV multi wii OSD firmware. You can get it from um, this location on the screen now, code.google.com slash p slash Rush-OSD-Development. And specifically, you want to download version 2.3, which you can see in the middle of the screen here, just above the view of the um, GUI. Um, if you click on that, then what you do, you'll actually find in there all of the um, download links. And what you need to download in particular is just the KV Team OSD underscore 2.3.zip file. And once you've got that, then we are in a reasonable place. The other thing it's worthwhile doing is uh, also searching for the um, EEPROM Clear utility, which is also listed on this main page at the bottom left-hand corner. That's always ha good to run through the board before you're doing it updating. That means there's no kind of legacy bits and pieces in any of the memory on the Minimo SD that will cause you problems after the flashing. Okay. So let's um, download this and just while we're on this screen, I have tried to get this working with the ArduCam underscore OSD software, the Minim OSD underscore basic, the Minim OSD underscore extra. Those are really designed to listen to the Mavlink protocol that's coming out of the telemetry port on an APM 2.5 controller. And those work great in those environments, but I've spent a day and a half kind of keep trying it, keep playing with all the cables, trying it in the FTDI port, this, that, and the other. I could always get the board to fire up and give me the welcome screen, but then it was sat waiting for Mavlink data out of this little multi wii board that we're using, and it never got any, so it never fired up. So um, eventually I got down to the Rush OSD development, which does require a little bit more work to get it uploaded onto the board, but if you've already gone through the process of coding your own multi wii flight controller, then this will seem very familiar to you. Right, okay, next job then, let's jump into the um, netbook and we'll actually show you what to do here to actually get this stuff up onto the board. So as we talked about, um, the first thing we're going to do is to actually um, clear the board itself. In this KV Team folder on my desktop, I have the things we've downloaded. There's that KV Team OSD underscore 2.3 file, and um, I've unpacked that into this directory structure here. So there's the uh, GUI to actually configure it. There's the OSD to actually um, that contains the INO file and all the everything else to put the firmware on. So if you're familiar with multi wii stuff, this is kind of the multi wii and that's kind of the multi wii conf version, if you want to think of it like that. Other thing we've got in here as well is the EEPROM clear, and that's the one we're just going to upload now. Just show you what that looks like. Go all the way to the top, EEPROM clear. One single file. It is a very simple program, this. All it does is write zero to all of the 512 bytes in the board, and then turns on the light, the little amber LED, 
when it's finished to be solid a high intensity so you know it's finished so obviously you need to make sure that you're connected to the right um, serial port for your board and you also need to make the board selection for the minimum OSD to be Arduino Pro or Pro Mini 5 volt 60 megahertz with 18 mega 328 click on upload it'll upload it the board will reboot run the code and that amber light the ST light will actually go solid on the minimum OSD and you know you're good for the next step next step then is for us to upload the firmware so what we're going to do is we're going to go into that KV OSD 2.3 directory structure we were looking at go into the OSD directory click on the OS KV team OSD.ino and there we are there's the firmware for this one now in config.h just like all the other bits and bobs we have the things that you can change I suggest that these configurable parameters are only up to here um, are things that you don't mess about with until you've got it all working and you're happy again make sure that the board is an Arduino Pro or Pro Mini 328 make sure the serial ports connected properly and then click upload once that's done then we're on to the next step to do the GUI configuration right so now we've got the firmware on the board um, what we'll do is we'll actually configure this thing so job one is going to be putting the FTDI adapter back onto the board and then plugging it in okay then we've got COM7 again and what we'll do is we'll go back into that directory structure that we had before but this time we will go into the GUI part of the menu Go into Windows 32. If you have a version that has Windows 64, don't run it, it doesn't work at the moment. And then we click on KV Team OSD GUI. And this will look very familiar for those of you who know the multi Wii code already. So here we are, this is what it looks like. So if we click on COM7, just like with multi Wii, with the one click will connect us and we're talking to the board. So there we are. And um, the first thing we need to do is to update the fonts. So we can browse for the fonts. There are two versions of the fonts in version 2.3 of the code. There's a big version and a little version um, called small and big, surprise, surprise. You click on the one you want, click open, and then click upload and then it will go through and actually upload each of the 256 characters I'm going to show you what that looks like here they all are laid out you can actually edit them if you really want to so if you you know want to uh, change the bits and pieces you can on uh, here don't know why you'd ever want to but these are all your direction to home arrows all the other bits and bobs so if you want to change things you could if you really wanted to so on the board then we obviously want to set it as a minimum board we want everything to come via the multi Wii connection um, other things in here we're going to want imperial we're going to want pal video and we're going to want the gps bits and pieces with the 360 degree heading and then once we've done all that we're going to write that to the board and once that's done then that is the main part of the setup done. We've done the fonts and we've set the bits and pieces that we want in here. Now, the next bit um, is we have to now wire this board into the actual machine itself. So let's do that next. So we've cleared the EEPRON on the board, we've put the firmware on, we've configured that firmware and importantly uploaded the font file that we need onto the board it's ready to wire into the multi Wii. Now there are two things we need to consider here. The two things are gonna be how we do the data and how we do power. We'll do data first because data's a lot easier. So if we bring up our little diagram, here's the multi Wii um, on the left hand side and the Minim, Minim OSD, I can say it, on the right. The connections are pretty straightforward. First of all, you connect obviously the ground and the plus five volts together. That means that the board is then uh, has a common voltage reference for the multi Wii. And then you connect transmit to receive and receive to transmit. Now, 
Just a word of warning, I had to cross my transmit and receive wires over by just taking the little pins out of the connector and swapping them over to get this to work. If you're doing this and your board fires up but then doesn't start to work and it just says when it starts that it, uh, the multi-wee version in the centre of the screen is zero, that means it can't hear the multi-wee. So cross the receive and transmit wires over and you should be in business. So that's data, pretty straightforward. Plug it into the UART um, output on the multi-wee, plug it into the connection that the FTDI plugs into on the minimum OSD, and you're set. Power is a little bit more complicated. So if we look at the board in a little bit more detail, so here's the board again. We have the 80 mega 328 on the left-hand side and the, I think it's a uh, Max 7456 chip on the right, there's actually three different power areas on the board, which makes it a little complicated. The first area is the um, plus five volts that the FTDI connector on the left-hand side runs, and that runs most of the board, including the, um, the 18 mega 328 processor. But interestingly, it doesn't go all the way across the board. There's a little pad that um, is on the front and on the back, and you can see it here. I'm actually pointing it out. On mine, it's actually soldered. Uh, the, these are bridged, and we'll talk about why that's important in a minute. Um, that saved me a job because I was going to do this anyway. If we go back to the diagram, so you have that one plus five volt area. You have a second plus five volt area that runs the um, 7456, which is the other chip. And then finally, you have a plus 12 volt area, which is the bit for the video in the bottom right hand corner. Now, the way it actually works is the plus five volts um, on the around the 12 volt area is actually driven if you don't have those uh, two pads connected, it's actually driven by the 12 volt area. Um, I don't do this, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, the voltage regulator that takes the 12 volts and drops it to five volts for the right hand side of the board uh, has had lots of problems. It's a half um, an amp, um, but it gets really hot and sometimes will blow up. So I would recommend that if you're going to do uh, put 12 volts, um, if you've got 12 volt cameras, which I don't, don't put the 12 volts through this board, connect the two um, pads as we've just looked at on the board at the bottom and on the top, and that means that the FTDI connector from the multi-way is powering the entire board, and that leaves you free and clear to then connect the, um, the bits and pieces up. So let, let's look at that in practice. So here we are, we've got video, and this is the video system that's already installed and working on the craft. So we have a LiPo battery going into the transmitter power module, that plugged into the transmitter. There's also a camera in here as well. The way it works is pretty straightforward. You plug the video uh, from the camera into the video in, you plug the video out into the video transmitter, and you then just connect both of those so there's a common ground in each of the connections. Even if uh, this is a 12 volt system, don't put the 12 volts through it. I would recommend that you always avoid that wherever possible because the 12 volts will make that regulator get very hot. Just connect that up directly externally of the board. So this is exactly what I have that we've been looking at on my multi-way. So we have a little five volt 80816 camera with a 120 degree lens the vault the line goes in to the video in and then goes out to the video out of the board into my fat shark transmitter and the whole board is then powered from the five volts from the multi-way and uh, it's all powered through those two little soldered connections one on the top and one on the bottom and we don't have to worry about it and we don't have to worry about our board blowing up either so now that's all done, what we can do is actually fire it up and I'll actually show you it working and hopefully this will allow those of you who are scratching your heads trying to get this working to um, get this thing 
up and running doesn't like the cockpit of an f15 once you've got this uh, osd on there i'll do another video later which will explain how you configure the elements um, there's no graphical way yet with the tools that are available to drag and drop the different elements around the screen or turn them off you do that through the transmission sticks but i'll but i'll do that um, in a follow-up video so please like subscribe comment and um, happy flying